Hey, welcome back to the Financial Freedom Series. This is number six. Going to be talking about investment options. So before we get into that, brief disclaimer, only my opinions. And with that being said, investment options. That's what we're talking about today. So the first two things that came to my mind were bonds and stocks. We're going to explore what is a bond, what is a stock, what kind of options fall within that. Um, we just learned about compound interest. We learned about the things that come with compound interest, the re tremendous returns, all the money you can make. But now you need to start to think about, well, what options do I have in terms of making all that money? Because you've got to do something. You've got to take some risk and you need to understand whatever it is that you're going to give your money to to get that return which brings me to the first point what is investing so it's an exchange you're taking your money right now that you've got that you've earned you're giving it to somebody and uh, the expectation is that in the future you're going to get more money back than you gave them right now and with continually passing time the more time the more money you should get back in return but with that, there's going to be different characteristics of different types of investments. Some of them uh, will be fixed rates and some of them will be increased risk and increased return. That's one thing you'll learn about investing is usually there's a correlation between the risk and the return of an investment. Meaning if there's a higher risk that you will lose your money, then there's typically a higher return that should come with that risk that you're taking on in knowing that, well, I could lose all my money, so I should be able to make twice my money in this investment. So something to take into account as you're making your choices. So um, first, just let's just cover the very simple basics in this episode. So stocks and bonds. Stocks are basically a small portion of a company that you own. If you own Amazon stock, you don't own all of Amazon, of course but you own a small, small percentage of Amazon as a whole. So technically you own Amazon, just a very small percentage of Amazon. And that's the case for all stocks. If you're an owner of a stock in a company, technically you own that company. So if you're ever considering buying a stock, don't think of it as, oh, if the stock's been going up, I should buy it because it's going to keep going up. That's speculation. That's gambling. You should think of it as, is this a good company that if I were actually had the option to own companies, would this be one that I would want to own? Okay. Um, with bonds, that's a loan. So essentially you're giving your money and you're buying a bond. But what you're really doing is you're loaning someone else an amount of money with a fixed rate of return, a interest rate, an annual percentage rate, APR is what they would call in the car industry. And typically that interest rate is determined by two main things. One is the Fed, the Federal Reserve's annual interest rate will determine it. If they have high rates, then you're going to get a higher rate of return on a variety of different bonds. The other thing is the credit rating of the entity that you're loaning money to. The higher the credit rating, kind of like a credit score for a person, but it's a credit rating for the people or the companies or the countries that are trying to borrow your money via bonds, then the better their credit rating, the lower return typically they're going to give you because there's less risk, which is what we just talked about. Other things that I'm not going to go into a ton of detail on, you can do your own research on, is real estate, commodities, cryptocurrencies, um, those are all options in investing. I'll touch on how to think about and undertake that option later in this little presentation. So let's cut to my man, the dude that I kind of refer to as quotes. And they have him as the most quoted investor on the planet. It's probably true. I remember when I very first learned about this guy in college and they said, who's the greatest investor of all time? And I, heck, I didn't even know any investors. And they said, Warren Buffett. It's this old random guy that lives in Nebraska. And I was like, the best investor of all time doesn't live in like New York or Miami. So he's a guy that lives on his own out there, has lived in the same house his entire life. Really interesting guy. You can do your own research on him and kind of learn a little bit about him. But 
He's got two major rules to refer to amongst his other hundreds of rules. Never lose money. Never forget rule number one. Okay? You might go, well, that's obvious. That's stupid obvious. Yes, but the truth of the matter is, as you go into investing, there's going to be thousands of things that are going to come across your face. You're going to go, oh, I could buy this. I could buy that. That's making a lot of money. That's making a lot of money. And the question will become, are you going to be able to exercise the self-discipline and the familiarity with yourself to be able to understand, I don't understand that. That's probably not something I should invest in. Just because other people are making money in it doesn't mean that I'm going to make money in it. And they may lose money in it. So I think what he's trying to implore and what I'm trying to implore to you is as you enter investing, make sure that you understand the risks that you are undertaking. So that brings me to the next point. What's the secret to making a ton of money in investing? You know, this harkens me back to my favorite scene maybe in a movie ever, Kung Fu Panda. What is his name? Golly, I'm blanking on the uh, panda's name. He arrives at the Dragon Scroll. The Dragon Scroll is going to help him protect the major kingdom where he's grown up and lived. If he doesn't know the secret of the Dragon Scroll, then all is lost. He unfurls it. And what is in the Dragon Scroll? Nothing. There is no secret. And I try to tell this to people because I think it's a really important lesson that you internalize. Whether it's fitness, whether it's investing, whatever it is that you're trying to be great at or good at or make returns or be fit or whatever it is in your life that you're trying to improve at, there is no secret. You have to invest in the process. You have to learn. You have to put forth effort. You have to pay attention to it. And you need to be aware of uh, the different information available to you to be able to make logical, rational decisions that are going to lead to the best outcomes possible. So what's a good start to learn about investing aside from this video series? Well, my uncle gave me this book to begin with and it was a, a great help. And really what it is is a starter on your journey of learning about investing. And that's Rich Dad Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. He's kind of the father of personal finance. Um, one of the people that has been attributed to uh, leading people down the road of learning about how to grow their money. Uh, another one I would recommend to you, 100% would recommend to you, would be I Will Teach You To Be Rich by Ramit Sethi. That's on the bottom right there. Um, he's a Stanford grad who decided, oh, well, I'll write a book and teach young people how to be wealthy. It's very simple, very straightforward, and it will go in a little bit more depth than what we're going to discuss in this episode. So these are just introductory books and thoughts that for you to think about. But I think the main idea that I want you to take away as you're starting to think about and understand what different investment options you have are, is that you need to educate yourself before you start to take upon risks. Because last episode, I showed you how you can end up with millions of dollars. And it's 100% true. But before you get to that point, you need to navigate the path of going, okay, this is how I can protect my money and grow my money and understand how it's working. Okay. In the next episode, I'm going to present to you index funds and most specifically target date funds. Target date funds, I think are going to be ideal for the majority of you watching this because it's going to choose your investments for you and it's going to um, update your risk as you get older and take into account different things that help protect people from losing money. So next episode, target date funds, index funds. Hope you learned something.